Hi everybody, and welcome to Making the Most of Your Microsoft Software Donation. Just a little bit about ReadyTalk, which is the webinar platform we'll be using today. You will all be muted throughout this conference, and so if you have any questions, whether or not it's about the content or about how to use ReadyTalk, go ahead and you can chat those questions into your chat pane. Um, if you do lose your Internet connection, you can reconnect using that same link that you used to connect to the first time. And if you do need any additional assistance, you can contact ReadyTalk support at 800-843-9166. And just as a reminder, if you do need to leave the conference early today or you just want to review the content later, we are recording this webinar. We will be emailing the recording out to all registrants later today along with the slide deck and any additional resources that you may need. And we will also be posting that on the TechSoup website at a later point. And so again, welcome to Making the Most of Your Microsoft Software Donation. I want to go ahead and get started by thanking Microsoft for all of their wonderful assistance both with this webinar and um, for their participation in the Microsoft Software Donation Program. And you can learn a little, a little bit more about that by going to TechSoup.org forward slash Microsoft. A little bit about who we are. My name is Kyla Hunt. I'm going to be your facilitator today. And with us today is Alexandria Lewis and Carlos Bergfeld, both from TechSoup. And you will also see in the chat box the names Julie Nabeas and Becky. They are both from TechSoup and will be assisting in the chat as well. And so just a little bit about what we will be covering today. We're going to start off with talking a little bit about eligibility and products, um, talking about rules and restrictions, the Get Genuine program. Um, and then we will probably look at a few questions. Um, some questions that will be coming in the chat pane at that point, I will be reading them aloud to the presenters and we will be able to answer that audibly. We're then going to be talking about the Volume Licensing Service Center, Software Assurance, and some additional resources. And then we will close out the hour by handling some additional questions. And so with that, I do want to go ahead and hand over the reins to Alexandria Lewis who will be getting us started today. Hello everyone. This is Alexandria Lewis with TechSoup Global, and I am going to go over um, the eligibility of um, organizations to request Microsoft through TechSoup, uh, at least in this portion, then we'll continue on through other portions. Um, when you go to our website, www.techsoup.org, we prefer that you log in to your account. If you have not created a member account, you can click the Join TechSoup information and complete that uh, drop down of, of uh, products or of, uh, information that we're looking for there. Once you are joined and logged in, go to the uh, TechSoup.org slash eligibility quiz to check your eligibility for Microsoft products. On the eligibility quiz page, you'll see the Select Organization drop-down. Go ahead and select your organization's name. If you are associated to more than one organization account, they'll all be listed there, and there'll be an additional new organization um, if you have another additional organization that you want to add. This is a general overview of the eligibility check for um, nonprofit, 501c3 nonprofit organizations with TechSoup. You can then select, uh, hover over the Browse by Donor section and click on the Microsoft link, which will take you to the Microsoft Donation Program page. This will give you an overview of the Microsoft Software Donation Program, including um, volume licensing, eligibility, etc. The program rules and restrictions. An organization's allotment of Microsoft software is reset every two years. 
it used to be once upon a time, but um, the information was reset in a two-year cycle that was renewed every time somebody placed an, uh, an, an order in a two-year cycle. Now it is a one-time date. Um, after January, excuse me, July 27, 2011, the cycle was reset so that once you place a Microsoft request, a new cycle begins and your anniversary date will always be the date of your first Microsoft request after the July 27, 2011 date. There is no limit on the number of separate requests the organization can make and no minimum quantity requirement as there once was. During a two-year ordering cycle, an organization can request products for up to 10 title groups. For title groups that contain applications that run on an individual computer like a desktop or a laptop PC, there is a 50 license maximum. For title groups that contain client access licenses or other licenses that provide for connection to or management of a, so of a server, there is also a 50 license minimum. For server products, there is a 5 product maximum regardless of title group. In order to find the title groups for the Microsoft pro uh, pro product program, um, you'll go back to that overview of Microsoft Software Donation Program and you'll see the uh, See All MS Title Groups PDF. Here's a quick look at the beginning of that list. You can see from the example that for the Core Cal Suite, um, you have Core Device Cal Suite and Core User Cal Suite. You can have up to 50 of those combined total uh, titles in a two-year time period. Uh, each title counts as a title towards your 10 title maximum, but the products will be included together in the title group for a 650 maximum. Get Genuine products are also available for uh, Microsoft a existing PC hardware only. Um, they are full operating systems and they are not upgrades. They are available to correct these scenarios. A couple highlights would be counterfeit, pirated, or otherwise illegal, unlicensed, or improperly licensed Windows operating systems. The standard edition of Windows 8, Home Premium, Home Basic, or starter editions of Windows 7 or Windows Vista, Home or starter editions of Windows XP, Linux, free DOS or other operating systems. Eligible organizations may place one request ever for the Microsoft Get Genuine Windows operating system products. Um, this is a, a program that Microsoft is um, attempting to get all of the licensing for nonprofit organizations to a genuine license. Um, if you require an upgrade, of an existing Microsoft product uh, operating system, you can use the upgrade grade product which does not have the once ever restriction. Administrative fees. Our administrative fees partially subsidize our donation programs and ensure that TechSoup can continue to offer donated and discounted technology products as efficiently as possible at the lowest possible cost. Our Microsoft donation program has gone green. Um, it used to be that you could request media for your Microsoft products. Microsoft has um, taken that program and gone green with its technology. Um, software media kits may be requested directly from Microsoft through the Volume Licensing Service Center for a nominal charge. Okay, at this point I want to go ahead and take a couple of questions that have come in. Um, we had one question that was wondering if this was tied at all to Microsoft licensing uh, keys, volume licensing keys. I don't know if you could speak to that. Absolutely. So the Mo Microsoft Volume Licensing Key Service is exactly how we fulfill all of our Microsoft products. They, you would go to the Vi Microsoft Volume Licensing Service Center, and there you would receive your MAK or KMS keys. 
Okay, fabulous. And we did have a couple of requests that um, people are wanting you to go over the definition of a title group again. Of course, that's a little confusing. So the title group, um, if you go back to the um, let me see if I can find this screen here fast. Okay, so if we go back to the title group screen, you'll see that there is a additional information section. If you click on that, um, see all MS title groups PDF, it will load the um, title groups PDF. And then you'll see in bold, for example, Access is the title group and the product that's listed in under Access is Access 2013. If you go down a couple more and you see Core Cal Suite, you'll see that there are two products listed in the Core Cal Suite title group. When you are requesting products through Microsoft, you can have um, 10 title uh, 10 titles with up to 50 licenses in a title group. So if you needed core device Cal licenses and core user Cal licenses, you could request a total of 50 device and user Cal's um, in a two-year time period. However, though because the core device Cal and the core user Cal are different titles, they would count as two titles against your 10 titles for the two-year time period, but you could only request a total of 50 of them for your two-year allotment. Okay, great. And we did have a question that just came in that was wondering what the definition of a cow is. Another good question. A CAL is a client access license which is used for um, the purposes of um, giving licensing to the individual end users to the server. Okay, and we'll go great. over more of that. We'll go over more of that when we continue with the with the uh, explanations. Okay, awesome. And we we have just a ton of questions, but we have um, a lot of time, so I just want to go ahead and co cover a little bit more. Um, Andy was wondering, so there are no Mac OS products available? Is that correct? We are not currently offering any Mac OS products. That's correct. Great. Um, and then Rose was wondering, beyond Get Genuine, is there another way to get an operating system? Yes. So Microsoft allows us to offer both the Get Genuine licensing for the operating systems and the upgrade product for the licensing of the operating systems. Um, if you have an existing Microsoft uh, operating system, say an XP or a Vista, um, and you want to upgrade to the Windows 8 or 7, um, those upgrade products are available in the title groups list. Okay, great. And we also had a question wondering what is the difference between the two types of keys? You mean between the um, the MAC, MAK and the KMS? I believe um, so, yes. I, I believe we're going to go over that further. <laughs> if we it's don't, basically we'll a difference. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but it's basically a difference between um, whether it, it depends on the size of the end users that you have accessing the server. If you have more than 50, um, it's recommended that you use the. Uh, I believe it's the MAK, the management tool. And then if, you're, if you have less than 50 users, then it, you should use the KMS tool. Okay, got oh, it. I'm sorry. It's the other way around. So if you have 50, more than 50 accessing, you should use the KMS. And if you are having less than 50 access the server, then you should use the MAK. Okay. And as a follow-up, um, the person you asked that was just saying that both types show up when they log in, so they were confused about which one um, to right. use. They, when you do log into the Volume Licensing Service Center, they, do, they will both show up because some organizations need to have access to one or the other. Um, and it's easier for Microsoft to just list them both so that they don't have to figure out what each individual organization's needs are. Okay, great. 
Um, and there are a lot of questions. Just so everybody knows, there are a lot of que- I see a lot of questions about volume licensing, um, and we are going to be covering that in just a few moments. So I'll probably hold most of those questions till after that. But um, there are just a few other questions. Um, Rich was wondering if we received ten computers that were completely white and do not have an OS, would they purchase ten full Windows OSs or just one, and then buy nine upgrades? That's, That's a great question. So you actually have to have a full operating system for each of the endpoints. So each of the computers with the wiped uh, OS needs a, a, a full license. They would have to get the Get Genuine. Um, sometimes when um, organizations call into our um, client services area for our um, for our client services um, phones assistance, we recommend that they consider how many do donated computers they think they will get in the next couple of years, and then consider potentially requesting a couple of additional full operating system licenses. Because with the Get Genuine program, it is a one-time ever uh, use of the product. So if you think that you have 10 computers, but you think you might get a couple more donated over the next couple of years, the licensing price is um, at such a good admin fee that we recommend that you consider getting a couple of additional licenses. Even if those licenses end up being um, um, upgraded, um, if Microsoft comes up with a newer version in the next couple of years, they are still eligible for um, the uh, a software assurance, which we will go over in a little bit, um, and or once you have the full operating system, even if it's an older system, you can then later come back and use the upgrade products to upgrade the then expired or older version to a newer version. Okay, got it. And I'm just taking a look at other questions that have come in because people are just asking a ton of questions, which is great. <laughs> and I really hope that people keep submitting all these questions. Um, so let's see. One person was wondering, they have a couple of users that have desktops and laptops. Do they need to purchase one or two for, you know, for each specific purpose? So each endpoint, each computer, each desktop, each laptop needs to have its own licensing. So if you are going to have an operating system on each computer, then you need to request the licensing for each computer. If you need to have um, a license of uh, the Office Suite, for example, you need to have one licensed copy for each of the computers as well. Okay, great. And here's a great question. Um, Becca was wondering once she supplied once she applies for a donation, what is the time frame before it gets approved and they can download the product? That's another great question. So the um, the way that the, micro, the excuse me the way that TechSoup uh, runs the software donation program is um, you sign up as a member through TechSoup. Once you have signed up as a member, then you create um, an organization account. The organization account goes through a qualification process to make sure that you are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which can oftentimes be completed in um, uh, internally. We don't necessarily need any additional information from you. Um, if we request additional information, it can take three to five business days to get your organization qualified. Uh, once you have actually created the organization account, you can go through and place a donation request. And when your organization is qualified as a, a nonprofit organization through us, then it's a two to three business day turnaround from the day that your organization has either placed the request and or is qualified for uh, donations through TechSoup till you can receive the download information to get the Microsoft product. And then from there it's however long you want to take doing the install. Okay, got it. And we have a couple of questions about upgrades and downgrades. Um, the one question about downgrade, downgrades is wondering, they, um, this person wants to order SharePoint Server 2010, but since only 2013 is available, they are wondering if they can order 2013 with downgrade rights to get the 2010 version. Yes, all of them, uh, almost all of the Microsoft products that are listed on uh, our website are also downgradable. They are upgradable and downgradable. So um, those products should be available on the Volume Licensing Service Center. Um, you can li look for older versions of the same product when you go to do your install. Okay, got it. And on the same kind of upgrade 
idea. Renal was wondering, since you cannot upgrade from XP or Vista directly to Windows 8, how does that upgrade process work? Would it then be, in fact, the full product? Okay, so if you have an, I'm sorry, ask me that again. It's a Windows. It says XP, since you cannot XP upgrade or from XP or Vista directly to Windows 8. How would that upgrade process work? I can answer. This is Carlos. Um, that's more of a uh, installation issue because you can. The upgrade license doesn't have anything to do with what uh, version of Windows you have. So. You can have XP or Vista and request the upgrade product. That's fine. I think he's referring to the fact that you have to do a clean install uh, when you get Windows 8 or 7 um, from either of those products, um, which is fine. The the version that you get of, of the Windows the upgrade product is the full software product. It's just you're not eligible to request it unless you have a prior version of Windows. Um, it's it's only for licensing purposes. So you'll you'll be fine requesting the the full product as long as you have a prior eligible version of Windows. Um, the process will be a little more complicated, and you will have to do a clean install as opposed to an in-place upgrade where you can just put in the disk and have it guide you through the installation process on the desktop. Okay, great. Thank you, Carlos. Um, and then I just want to cover a couple of more questions before we get to Carlos's section, and then everything else we will handle at the end of that section. Um, Wayne was wondering if it is possible to get Windows 7 Professional through TechSoup? Yes, we do have that in our list of products. You can either do a search for it in the search tool on um, any of the um, TechSoup global pages, or you can go back to the, um, the PDF document and find it in the list of title groups. Okay, it's listed alphabetically. It. Okay, great. And Lowell was wondering, in January, we they purchased a single Windows 7 license for their executive director. Um, does that mean they can no longer order Windows 7 for the rest of their PCs? That is incorrect. As long as they have requested um, no more than 50 of the Windows 7 licensing in a two-year time period, then they are fine. Um, and because the, I think this is actually more of a question of um, we made a request in January and are we not going to be eligible again until next January? And Microsoft did used to have a restriction where you could only make one Microsoft request per year. But they've done away with that, and you can request as often as you need to, provided that you don't go over the 10 title and 50 license per title group uh, maximum in a two-year time period. Okay, got it. And I think with that, we should probably just go ahead and get to Carla's section. Um, and so any other questions that have come in, we will handle at the end if we have not actually covered that topic um, during Carla's section anyway. Um, but thank you, Alex, for that wonderful rundown. And thank you, Kyla. Carlos, you can take it away. Okay, great. Uh, this is Carlos Bergfeld. I'm the lead web content developer for TechSoup Global. Uh, let me skip ahead. I think we went back in the slides here. Uh, there we go. Um, so we've been talking a lot about volume licensing um, and the Volume Licensing Service Center. Well, if you don't know anything about it, it's that's fine. We actually give you instructions on how to access the Volume Licensing Service Center um, as soon as you request your first Microsoft donation or any subsequent donations. Um, so you'll get an email that tells you how to log in and how to access your license keys. Uh, this next slide just shows an image of the Volume Licensing Service Center. It might be familiar for some of you, um, but if not, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is where you go to sign in and access uh, your keys and a lot of your other benefits um, and product training things like that. I'm actually going to the next slide there. Did that work? Um, yeah, you're showing right now I'm seeing the slide that has a, a red square around the top where Okay, great. Home. The uh, wasn't highlighted in my ready talk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, here's an image of the license key just to show you what that looks like. Um, there's a few product keys there and it says the type KMS or MAK. We were talking about that earlier. Um, but they'll all be listed on this page. Um, something that's cool about the Volume Licensing Service Center and, and Microsoft donations through TechSoup in general is that they include software assurance, which we've already discussed a little bit. Um, but in general, 
uh, if, if new versions of the products that you request comes out within two years. So if you request, uh, if you requested Windows 7 a year and a half ago, and now you want um, Windows 8, you can access it without even requesting it again for free, or you know any of the Office products or any of the Microsoft products. Um, and you get all that through the Volume Licensing Service Center. Um, you can just go in and get uh, your downloads there. Uh, there's also e-learning uh, courses, so you can go through self-paced courses uh, for you and your staff to learn about Office applications. Um, and there's something called the Home Use Program, uh, which allows you to download Microsoft Office for Windows or Mac uh, for 10 bucks. Um, and there's a special page for that, and we have more information about that on our website as well. Um, here I wanted to show you, since I'm the content developer, I wrote a lot of the support resources we have for the Microsoft program. Um, and I think a lot of people might not know they exist, because if you go to the Microsoft Software Donation Program page, if you go to the Product Donor menu and click on Microsoft, um, at the top of the page it has the overview, and then you can browse for products. But if you keep scrolling down, you'll see there's a couple of panel boxes um, that describe the Volume Licensing Service Center and some Microsoft Server products and how they're licensed. Um, all of these boxes have little summaries about how to get your software from the Volume Licensing Service Center, uh, what are product keys, the difference between all the product keys, um, what's included in Software Assurance, how to manage your account in the VLSC, and how volume licensing products are different from retail products. Um, below that, there's the server panel box, which has guides for specific server licensing. A lot of the server products are sort of complex, so we have guides for those. Um, and most of these boxes are just summaries of the information, and you'll click. There's a link uh, in the little panel that allows you to click and go and view in depth uh, more information about that. So here's an example of the VLSC guide we have. This is the Getting Started page, so it basically describes what the VLSC is um, and what you can do there. And from there you can browse to the other topics that were on the previous page as well, like downloading your keys and the difference between licenses. Uh, here's an example of one of the server licensing guides. This is just an introduction to Microsoft Server Licensing. Um, which actually answers a few of the questions that we had already, talking about what CALs are, um, when you need CALs, the different types of licensing for different server products, um, because some of them are licensed differently. Some don't require CALs, and some do. Um, another support resource we have for Microsoft is if you go to the menu at the top and click Support, and scroll down and click Using Your Donation, um, that will take you to the Using Your Donation page. and uh, this exists for a lot of uh, our donors. We have links to support pages. Um, by default, the Microsoft page is actually already uh, linked there. So um, it says, see, see TechSoup's mo more information about Microsoft support resources. Um, and if you click on that, it will take you to this page that has several resources for Microsoft donations. Um, you can browse the Microsoft products from here. There's a lot of links to Microsoft's page. If you want to look at their resources as well, because they have some pretty in-depth um, resources about upgrading and the Volume Licensing Service Center and different products. Um, here are a few links that we just included here that for some of the pages we've already gone over. Uh, but that the, my, the Volume Licensing Service Center was the page where I showed you originally where you could sign in. Um, Microsoft has some information about software assurance there, and there's some helpful videos too that we've linked that describe the benefits. And the guide to the Microsoft Volume Licensing Service Center is what I showed you before that was linked uh, from the donation page or the Microsoft donor page in those little panel boxes. Um, and that's just the getting started article which links to all the rest about how to obtain your license keys and that sort of thing. Um, and then we also have a FAQ that's a blog post on TechSoup site. Um, here is the Microsoft Helpline number where you can call if you have specific volume licensing support questions um, that TechSoup can answer. And there's an email address there too. And if you want to learn more about Microsoft's nonprofit programs, they actually have more uh, than just the donation program through TechSoup. Um, if for some reason you need to go to a reseller to get charity uh, pricing or discounts, or something like that, you can go there to obtain additional licenses beyond what you've already 
obtained through TechSoup. And I think that's my last slide, so probably go <laughs> take some more questions now. Okay, yeah, we have ton we have a ton of questions that have come in. Um, Great. <laughs> so um, on volume licensing, Debbie was wondering, with the upgrades, are you still limited to 50 with a volume license? Uh, yes, you are. Okay. All right, and. Uh, Carlton was wondering, is it possible to renew the Microsoft license on your site when your software assurance runs out? Oh, yes, absolutely. You would, but if your software assurance has lapsed, you would just request another upgrade product uh, through TechSoup or okay. another license through TechSoup. Upgrade would be in the case of Windows or just a standard license for any other desktop product. Okay, got it. And we had a request wondering if you could explain Software Assurance Program just a little bit more. This person uh, ordered Project 2010 less than a year ago. Then they were wondering if that means that when they go and download the software now, does it automatically give them 2013, or do they actually need to download 2013? You would need to download the, the product. Uh, could you, the question was whether your product would upgrade on its own? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have to download the product. Um, Windows or any of the products don't have automatic uh, software updates beyond um, maybe a minimal update uh, while the software is in its current version. So, you know, uh, you, uh, whatever software you have, it'll download automatic updates for you know the 2010 version, but it's not going to cycle automatically to 2013 with with software assurance. Um, that would be neat. But no, it, you have to download it because it is, it is a new product and it has different software um, system requirements. And the, I, I need to touch on something from the last question too. You actually can uh, renew your software assurance uh, through the Volume Licensing Service Center. Uh, it, it is a different process though, and it might be more cost effective to, to request the, the upgrade product through TechSoup anyway, so we usually advise that, or the, just to request a license again. Um, because software assurance is a benefit that not, not only nonprofits have, it's for all Microsoft volume licensing. Okay, got it. And we did have a couple of questions um, pertaining to whether or not Office 365 was available through TechSoup. It is not. Um, we have an offer from one of our partners called Tech Impact that is a consulting offer uh, that they will uh, look at your organization and, and tell you if, if Office 365 seems like a, a, a good fit for you. Um, the offer is called NP Office, uh, and I think the full name is on our site is NP Office Office 365 uh, Consulting. I can actually and let me pull that up. Um, I'm going to share my desktop. All right, can you see that here? Yes, I can. All right, great. Um, so you know, I can, so you can see all your Skype stuff on the site. Okay, <laughs> I'll close that. All my friends. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the product donor here will be Tech Impact, um, or you can just search here for for NP Office, and we have it here. Off NP Office Office 365 Assessment. Um, so again, they assess your your organization and your infrastructure and see whether or not you you know could support this deployment for Office 365. Um, and they'll actually help you in deciding you know, if you want to do this or not. Um, they also might be able to act, give you access to, to discounted rates for Office 365 depending on your organization. You know, we say here that they don't guarantee that Microsoft will approve a discount for the organization uh, as a result of the consultation, which is true. Um, so it just depends. But that is you know, that's the closest thing we offer to Office 365 on our site. Okay, awesome. And just so everybody knows, any of the links that we talk about today I'll be sending out in the follow-up email. Um, so don't worry about dropping down um, exactly where we're talking about because I will send those links out. Um, also, Roberta was wondering, just to clarify, may public libraries get software from TechSoup for staff computers? Yes, they can. <laughs> um, it, you know, it depends on the program. It sounds like she's asking. It didn't sound like she was asking specifically for Microsoft. Um, um, but a lot of programs are they're eligible for 
uh, libraries are eligible depending on the program, and we have a special page for that. I might just show you that here. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, that's not the page. Uh, if you go under organization type right here and go to libraries, or you can always just use the eligibility check to check your eligibility. Um, but it lists some of the, you know, the top donation programs for libraries, some of the newer donation programs, and then additional programs you might be eligible for. Um, it is not compre comprehensive. Some some donor partners uh, don't allow libraries to receive donations, but it's it's uh, it's a pretty broad selection. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And Bobby was wondering, can you tell us more about the Home Use Program or tell us where we can access the information on TechSoup.org about it? I can. So the web, this is the actual, I had it already up. Um, it's www.microsofthup.com. Um, and it's a pretty basic website actually. It might ask you to uh, select your region or something like that. Um, but it tells you right here, you know, you can take Office Home for $9.95. Um, there's Professional Plus and Home and Business. Um, and you have to enter your work email or program code to see if you're eligible. Um, you might have to contact Microsoft for that program code if, if your work email doesn't work. Um, but yeah, that's the basic information. Okay, awesome. And Tom was wondering, um, he says he still has several XP machines. If he purchases mm -hmm. Office 2013 today but installs Office 2007 on those old machines, can they reinstall 2013 on a newer machine when each old XP machine is retired? Hmm. I'm not sure you can get Office 2007. Uh, through volume licensing still. It's, uh, if you go to the volume licensing website, it's not every version of, uh, every prior version of the product that's available. It's, it's, it's just usually just one previous version. So right now it's probably just Office 2010 and 2013 uh, that are available in the VLSC. So he wouldn't be able to get 2007. But also, um, the other part of the question was he was wondering if he could, if he up, or if he had a different machine, if he could move Office over to that other machine. Is that yeah? So right? once e yeah, because they have all those old XP machines. Once each mm -hmm. one is is retired, if they can reinstall Office 2013 on each one individually. Um, I guess well, since he couldn't get, let's say it was 2010, then um, yeah, he could install if if his computers could support 2010, since 2007 is not available. Right. Um, he could he could do that with 2010, uh, I think. Uh, but I guess it would depend. He's uh, he, these are different computers that he's buying, and he wants to take the office license over there. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like it would be fine. I have I'd have to I think confirm, but I think that'd be fine as long as he wasn't simultaneously using those licenses. You know, using it on the old machine and the new machine. Okay, got it. And we have. We have several more questions. Um, so Ronell was wondering, this is a corrected question I believe from before, I'm wondering if you have, if you have to have the license key for, um, for the original XP or Vista OS when doing the clean install for Windows 8. They were just wondering if the original license key was needed to upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 8. Um, I don't think you do. I mean, if this, it would depend. He's talking about something that. Is, is I guess it would talk, depend he's, what he's talking about. The upgrading from um, XP or Vista directly to Windows 8. That question. Right. I mean, it would depend if it, it's something he's talking about a retail product. Because if you if you had if you had requested the product through TechSoup, it wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't have lost that key or anything, and it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. It'd be on the VLSC anyway. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think he's talking about when you are upgrading. I, I know what he means. You look on the bottom of your computer, and sometimes there's a sticker that has the key, or on the old disk, there's a key there, or something like that. And people may have lost that. Um, and, and, and no, I don't think you need that, especially since we, we provide a new license. There's a new key anyway. It's not the license key, but Microsoft doesn't actually require you to present that as long as you have the installation 
running on the computer, you should be able to install the upgrade product. Okay, got it. And Robert was wondering, um, one of the titles that they see is a single user TechNet subs subscription. And he's saying that he has subscribed to TechNet for several years outside the TechSoup program and was wondering if that TechNet subscription was the same thing um, through TechSoup or not through te TechSoup. So is he, he subscribed to TechNet through – how did he get his original subscription? I'm not sure. It doesn't say. It just says – and Robert, if you want to go ahead and type a clarification in there. It just says that he has subscribed to TechNet um, for several years outside the TechSoup program before he mm -hmm. used of so he's wondering if our product, our TechNet product, is the same. Exactly. And Apparently, it's uh, it's not quite the same. It's more limited than the full version, um, and that's described on our our product pages. So you can go to. Uh, I'm sure this is what he's looking at here. I'll search for it. So we have a product offered called TechNet Plus Single User Subscription. Uh, it's for two years. Let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to see. I don't see. I don't see exactly how it's limited here, but it's not 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 quite identical. Okay. But if you look at the description, and it, if it seems like it will serve your purposes, it should be, I mean, it should be fine. Okay. And Carlton was just chiming in to say that they currently, that they currently have used TechNet Plus, and it seems approximately the same. Okay. Um, and Wayne was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit more on Software Assurance. So if you just want to go ahead and you know just kind of give another recap on exactly what Software Assurance provides. Sure. Actually, I'll, I'll show them where they can find it um, themselves and also go over it. Um, so I think I have that open still. Maybe I don't. Whoops. Too many tabs. Here we go. Um, so we have a section of our Volume Licensing Service Center, our guide called Software Assurance Benefits. Um, it's actually pretty lengthy because there are a lot of benefits. Um, but the basic one uh, that we already talked about were, were the, the software upgrades that you're eligible for if a new version comes out within the two years after the release, uh, or two years after you request your product, rather. Um, let's see. You can get Office multi-language packs uh, at no cost if you have a license for an Office suite. Um, so those are add-on products that allow you to display the interface in uh, a lot of different languages, um, which are helpful too. There's the home use program, which I was we were talking about earlier um, that I gave the link for. So there's some more information about that here. Um, there's also something that uh, I don't know if it's part of software assurance, but well, Alexandria answered a question earlier about using your um, software on a notebook that I wanted to add something to. So if you if you have a copy of Microsoft Desktop a desktop application, and you need to use it at home, and you have a desktop uh, at work, and you know for some reason you can't take the the laptop home. They Microsoft licensing does allow you to install um, that product on the your work computer and on a mobile device, which includes a laptop. Um, the key is that you're not supposed to use those at the same time. So you just have one license; you're only supposed to use it, you know, one at a time. But you can if you have uh, Office or um, map point or something like that installed on your work computer and on a, a laptop, um, but it's only you can only use it for work purposes, and you're only supposed to use it, um, you know, one or the other, not not at the same time. Um, there's the e-learning courses that I went over or touched on earlier. There's a lot of courses available, and this this there's instructions on this page on how to view uh, specifically which ones are there. Um, but yeah, there's courses for you know server applications. Uh, office applications, all that kind of stuff. Um, and this, this guide is good because it gives you a step-by-step, -step, you know, you can see all these numbers here, but it tells you exactly where to click and what to do to access these benefits. 
Um, you can go, here's the TechNet benefit as well. Uh, a little bit about that, which is, you know, this is different from the TechNet product we were talking about. And there's also, um, let's see, I'm trying to summarize all the rest here. A lot of these probably don't apply to many orgs, but you know, there's roaming use rights, uh, which relates to remotely accessing your software. Um, Windows Thin PC, uh, which is a, which is a smaller, uh, what's, what, how do you describe it? Sort of a more minimal version of the Windows operating system that you can use on endpoints. Um, an example might be at a, a computer lab. Um, where you have user stations who, you know, all they need to do is access the web or something like that. So you have these low footprint endpoints that aren't aren't very powerful machines that are running uh, Windows thin PC. Um, and you, this is saying here that you have access to that. So if you request a version of, if you request Windows 7, um, which actually probably are Windows 8 right now, I don't know, um, you would have access to Windows thin PC. Okay, awesome. And we had a couple of questions about e-learning. Um, there's a question wondering if there is e-learning available for Windows 8, and if you could point out if you knew where that was. Uh, you know, I haven't checked specifically, but I bet I, I would assume that there is. Yeah, um, Becky, but, Becky chimed in in the chat saying that she thought it just it had just become available. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome. really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. But anyway, if you so on this on this page again, you know, viewing a list of courses. So to view the current list of e-learning courses, uh, you sh you can go to this page. Um, there's a link here. I'm not going to do it because I think I have to log in. Um, to do it. Right. Oh, and actually, looks like you don't. So we can actually see uh, see if the search works. Hmm, that didn't work very well. <laughs> And I have 640 results to filter through. Okay, I might might have to do a better search, but I believe what Becky said. <laughs> okay, great. And I'll take a look, and um, I'll try to send out what I can find. Um, and then the same person was wondering if e-learning would be available for their library users on public machines. Um, sorry. Let's see. I don't know the answer to that. Um, and I'll take I'll, I can take a look um, afterwards. Yeah, I'm trying to look here. Out. e learning course assignment is managed by DLSC. Quick license. Yeah, you might. I might direct them to Microsoft e learning for more information on that. Okay. And um, just to see, but you know, I would I would think so, but it's possible <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Um, and Anne was wondering, is there help available via either chat or email or phone to help her with information on a possible upgrade to Office 2013? So whether or not that would be available through TechSoup or through Microsoft, Microsoft themselves? Um, the, uh, I, can, I can address that. The, um, the products that are available on our website, there's, you can always post questions to our, our forums and blogs, um, but you can always call the uh, Client Services Department uh, for assistance. And um, if it's a very basic question, um, there's always information in the product description page. So you can look there to see if you think that your um, uh, information to the products that you have um, on your computer currently are going to be compatible with the system requirements for the, um, the program that you're looking to install. Um, additionally, if you are a small nonprofit and you don't necessarily have your own IT infrastructure, um, there is likely somebody on your board who knows somebody um, who is IT savvy, and or you could go to your local community college and see if they have people uh, willing to assist you with your IT questions.
Carol, does that help? Yes, sorry, I had accidentally muted my line. <laughs> Not had unmuted. Reading and thinking. Um, and it does. Thank things. you very much, Alex. I really appreciate <laughs> sure. that. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, um, for the, some of the questions I'm seeing in chat are pretty specific, and if they have not been addressed in the chat pane or audibly, I'll be sending them for follow-up. Um, so we will get your question answered. I just wanted to let everybody know um, that we are seeing all the questions come in. Um, and Gretchen was confirming yes that Windows 8 eLearning is available um, to um, employees. So you can find more information on e-learning and all that through the Volume Licensing Service Center. Um, I want to go ahead and take us back to the slides because as I wait for any additional questions to come through, and if anybody does have any additional questions, um, you can go ahead and type those into the chat pane. Um, I do want to just talk briefly a little bit about TechSoup. Um, we are, again, a 501c3 nonprofit organization just like so many of you out there, and we are attempting to work towards a day when every nonprofit, library, and social benefit organization on the planet has the technology, knowledge, and resources they need to operate at their full potential. And I'm still watching that chat pane. I do want to kind of take a moment to thank um, both of our presenters, Alex and Carlos, and both of my chat volunteers, Becky and Julie on the back end. And I do want to thank everybody for attending today. And of course, I want to thank Microsoft. And I am just taking a look to see if there are any chat questions that I have not seen that have come through. Tammy was wondering, are e-learning classes available if our organization is not eligible for Microsoft products? I don't know if either I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Sure. Is the e-learning available even if their organization is not eligible for Microsoft products? Uh, no. E-learning is a benefit of software assurance, so it comes through that. I mean, there are plenty of free Windows 8 videos and trainings and things like that um, online. And even I'm sure Microsoft has posted some tutorials that aren't part of the official e-learning, but they're not going to be the structured e-learning course. It would just be an overview or something like that. Um, but yeah, e-learning is a, is a benefit of software assurance, so that's something that comes with uh, the software you request through TechSoup. Okay, got it. And Jamie was wondering, um, she says she in installed the new Office 2013 package on a few computers around the office, but they were never prompted to enter a Mac key. Um, and wondering if this was a known problem or if there was something that um, it was something that there was a known solution for. Uh, and is the software not functioning or it's 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 working well? I guess either way. So if it if it's working well then it's probably doesn't really matter. But right. yeah, it might be embedded in the software or something. But um yeah, if 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 it was not working that would be a problem, I guess. I would assume that it was working because it was ended with is this a problem <laughs> in the question. <laughs> so I'm assuming that the software is still working. No no, as long as they've requested I mean they requested the right amount of licenses and they're only using that number of licenses, then that's fine. Okay, great. I, I, can I further to that? Um, Jamie, sure. you may find that in a couple of months you'll get a pop-up because Microsoft does offer a trial period when you are doing your initial installation of your product, um, especially from a disk. Um, so if you did not enter your uh, license key information and it was not embedded, um, you may get a pop-up in a month or two saying, um, could you please get a genuine license of this product um, now that you have tried our trial version, um, at which point you would go to the volume license Licensing Service Center, collect your key, and install with the, the license key at that time. Okay, great. And we did have one question that was wondering, it was from somebody who had requested um, Office Professional Plus 2010, um, but because there was no disk and they hadn't figured out how to get the setup key. And um, I was just wondering if either of you had um, a tip for what to, what to do in that situation if they did not know how to get their setup key. Um, it sounds like they just need to go to the Volume Licensing Service Center to get that key. Though. So that was the page I showed earlier, and they can. Right. Um, yeah, Alexander just was telling me that she would have, or he or she would have gotten that fulfillment, uh, the link to the BLSC in their fulfillment email. Um, but it's also all over our website. So if they if they lost the email for some reason, they can go to the Microsoft page on TechSoup and uh, C 
see exactly how to re- retrieve their product key. Uh, we have a section you know, specifically about that. Okay, got it. And Jason was wondering what happens if you run out of Mac keys but you need more? Um, that pulls together a bit more of a complicated question. It's, um, most nonprofit organizations um, get – well, all nonprofit organizations get only 50 licenses of Microsoft products through TechSoup in a two-year time period. Um, some nonprofit organizations may be eligible to register more than one branch location, um, but that is a, a conversation that, that needs to be had separately. Um, we can address that um, offline. Okay, great. So Jason, I'll, I, will, I will contact you about that. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. You're um, welcome. With that, I want to go ahead, I think, and just wrap things up a little bit. Again, thank you both Alex and Carlos for both your um, great presentations as well as the great follow-up with all these questions. Um, and I really want to thank all the audience members for, for um, submitting all these great questions because it really does help for making a um, – dynamic webinar. So again, thank you Carlos, thank you Alex, thank you Becky, thank you Julie, and of course thank you Microsoft. And again, thank you ReadyTalk who is our webinar sponsor who does provide this webinar platform for us. Um, when you all leave the webinar today, you will see a pop-up um, asking you to complete a survey. If you could please do that because it does help us in creating better webinars in the future. And again, we will be sending out the recording as well as resources later on today. So again, thank you everybody for attending, and I hope you all have a great day.